Investing in pre-foreclosures is an excellent way to acquire cash flowing properties. Many real estate mentors and coaches sometimes provide advice about pre-foreclosure investing that just may put you at risk, especially if you're wholesaling pre-foreclosures that you pick up with subject to financing. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to buy homes in pre-foreclosure using subject to financing, and then how to safely sell them without putting your business and ultimately your financial future at risk. Coming up in three, two, one. Hey guys, my name is Jeff Kaufman and I specialize in buying houses and teaching others how to buy houses using creative financing strategies like subject to and owner financing. Before we get started, do me a favor and subscribe to the Let's Talk Subject To channel by clicking the subscribe button below. I've made a pact with myself to create a new video on creative financing at least once per week. So after subscribing, don't forget to click the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. I appreciate you for doing that. Now let's jump into this. Okay, before we can talk about acquiring pre-foreclosure properties, we need to understand what a pre-foreclosure actually is. So a pre-foreclosure is a property whose owners have been served with a summons of complaint in a Liz Pendens suit. A Liz Pendens just means that there's been a lawsuit filed uh, regarding real estate. That's all that it means. If a homeowner is 90 days late, on that 90 day late mark, a notice of default and a demand letter are gonna be sent to the borrower demanding full payment of the entire balance of the loan. Federal law requires that the lender wait a minimum of 120 days before proceeding with a foreclosure, but some lenders are gonna allow uh, delinquent borrowers more time to either catch up payments or negotiate different terms, but it's totally at the lender's discretion. And at any point after the 120 day late mark, the lender can file a Liz Pendens action against the borrower. If the property is located in a judicial state and subject to judicial review, it can take as little as six months or uh, I've heard of I've heard of these things taking three years or longer in a judicial state to foreclose on, a, on the property. Uh, I happen to be in a non-judicial state and foreclosures can be dispositioned in as little as 20 days after that 120 day mark. So we're talking as little as 140 days. And I want you to keep in mind too that any non-judicial proceeding can actually, uh, it can be subject to review and it can actually be converted or, or turned into a uh, the judicial process, and that's going to definitely slow things down quite a bit. So it would be wise, if you're going to target pre-foreclosures, to understand whether or not you're dealing with a judicial or non-judicial state. And the reason for that is because it will determine when you actually initiate uh, making contact with the homeowner. It wouldn't make sense, for example, to start sending direct mail to a homeowner too early in the process, nor would it make sense if you started contacting them just you know a couple of days prior to the auction. So when is the best time to contact these homeowners? Well, the answer is, it depends. Early in my investing career, I was contacting homeowners who were either 30, 60, 90, or 120 days late on their mortgages. I really thought I was being slick. Uh, but I found out that this mortgage lates list really was not all that. I mailed that list month after month for almost a year. And all I got were a bunch of angry calls and absolutely zero deals. The point behind me telling you all of this is that you're gonna have to do the research into this process in your state and or county. And then you're gonna have to do a lot of testing to determine the best course of action. We can start with basic guidelines, but ultimately I'm not gonna be able to give you a definitive answer on when the exact time is right to reach out to these homeowners. Here's what I will suggest to you though. Contact these homeowners as close to the actual auction date as possible while still allowing you some time to do your due diligence. As of the date of this recording, pre-foreclosure inventory is at an all-time low. Nevertheless, I would suggest that you add pre-foreclosures to the top of your list of motivated homeowners to market to. These deals can be really, really lucrative, and it's a perfect opportunity for you to pick up some houses using subject to financing. The process for closing these deals is no different than any other sale, except for the fact that you're not gonna be paying off the seller's loan. Instead, what you're gonna do, you're gonna catch up any arrearages, if there are any, and then start making the payments on the seller's loan. There are plenty of investor-friendly title companies out there that will have absolutely no problem closing a subject to deal. Now, if you're thinking about assigning your subject to purchase contract, you might wanna reconsider. It can be a really slippery slope that can cause you tons of problems later down the road. For example, let's say that you promised your seller that you would make timely monthly payments on their loan 
and then you decide instead to go ahead and assign that contract to another investor. Well, what happens when that investor, uh, you know, what, let's say they hit some bumps in the road and funds tighten up for them or, uh, you know, they can't find a decent tenant that can cover the mortgage payment, whatever the case might be, what happens then? So what do you think is going to be the first thing that your buyer isn't going to want to pay when times get tough? It's probably going to be the loan on this subject to deal. Now, I've heard several people who employ this very strategy say that they, uh, they have the seller sign a CYA or a cover your <laughs> But we all know that in this litigious society that we live in, anybody can sue anybody for anything at any time. You don't even have to be guilty of anything to be sued. Guess who your seller is going to sue if the payments aren't made and their credit is destroyed even more than it already is. Even if they don't see you, they can sure make your life extremely difficult and seriously hurt your business reputation. I would just be super careful about this and really smart about it. That's all I'm saying. There are a couple of ways to legitimately wholesale a property you purchase subject to without opening yourself up for uh, you know trouble later on down the road. One of those ways would be to close on the property subject to the existing financing and then simply owner finance the property to your investor buyer. Uh, one other solution might be to uh, purchase the property in a trust and make your uh, buyer a beneficiary in the trust while you remain the director of the trust. And yet another way would be to maybe create an LLC, offer your buyer a membership in that LLC while you remain the manager of that LLC. Being the director of a trust or the manager of an LLC uh, what it does is allows you to stay kind of in the middle and it allows you to dictate what happens inside that trust or inside that LLC. So you see, there are multiple ways to bring value to your buyer without putting yourself at risk later on down the road. The last thing I'm going to say is we have an abundance of short sale investing gurus in the real estate investing space. Don't get me wrong. I think short sales definitely have their place. And I, you know, I refer short sales out to a specialist in my area, but the problem that I have with short sales is that they can they, they seriously damage your seller's credit. Um, if I can step in and I can actually help that seller save their credit, uh, that's the route that I prefer to take whenever possible. So I prefer to employ creative strategies like subject to real estate investing versus uh, getting into short sales. Not to mention short sales just take a super long time to get done most of the time. If you want to know more about how to market for sellers in pre-foreclosure so that you can buy more houses with subject to financing, check out my course, Marketing for Motivated Subject to Sellers, over at sub2empire.com. Okay, guys, thanks so much for joining me here on Let's Talk Subject 2. If you like this video, go ahead and click the like button. And if you haven't already, please click the subscribe button as well. Don't forget to check out my other videos on the channel. Also, check out my website at sub2empire.com. All of the links related to this video can be found in the description below. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.